The New Testament version for me of this, another angle of looking at it, was lo looking at those hands as Jesus' nail-pierced hands that Brother Zach had mentioned in John 20, uh, 24 through 29. And it's one thing I thought to t uh, tell a person, you know, maybe a, a man to a sweetheart that I've inscribed you on my hand with a tattoo. <laughs> and I realized that when those hands have a hole in it, and it's my sin that I've put it there. It's quite another thing. And I thought, how can I doubt such a love? Your walls are continually before me. And if we put our names there, as I did, I always have my eyes on you, Paul. You're the apple of my eye, right? Deuteronomy 32.10. The pupil of my eye. The center, this is what he said to me, the center of God's affection. And so that's how this verse came more alive to me this, this week. And I just wanted to share with you, there's one particular day that the Lord spoke to me when my heart was kind of burdened in the morning. This day I began particularly burdened, but his voice so sweetly intervened his blessed reassurance of his love and his care for me. He said, I won't forget you. On your hands, on his hands, there's a place for me. Oh, that might sound silly and only for a child to sing. But you see on those same hands are the scars that my sin pierced him through. It's those same hands that hold me, keep me straight and they keep me true. So when he says, I won't forget you, my burdened heart can rest because he holds me with those nail pierced hands in and through every single test. And when others pierce me with a word or a look or an act, I can look to my Savior's hands that paid the debt for me and say, who am I to not have grace and mercy on thee. And I know I am protected as I stay in the palms of those nail pierced hands. And I never, no, never, never want to leave his perfect plan. And the other wonderful thing is that my brothers and sisters are in those hands too. So I'm going to ask Michelle if you'll come and share as well. And after Michelle, it'll be when I. Hi, family. <laughs> um, Isaiah 49, 15 through 16. Um, I will not forget you. Behold, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. <clears throat> um, lately, I've had a lot of fears uh, kind of spin out in my mind surrounding childbirth. And the Lord has really brought my heart to rest. Um, so I wanted to just share in faith that he is going to continue to do that for me, for this circumstance and any trials to come our way. Um, for the last couple weeks, I've had fear and anxiety creep up in my heart. And I was finding myself turning to Google searches and childbirth books and blogs and advice about exercise and diet. And honestly, the list goes on. Um, and I was feeling inadequate physically, emotionally, intellectually, and just becoming quite afraid. Praise God, he stopped me in my tracks, especially with last week's memory verse, do not be afraid any longer, only believe. He also said, cast all your anxiety on me, Michelle, I care for you, in 1 Peter 5.7. Do you not know, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary or tired. His understanding is unknowable. He gives strength to the weary, and to him who lacks might, he increases power. That's from Isaiah 40, 28. <clears throat> I don't need pages of research or blogs or more and more of man's advice. Sure, eating healthy and exercising is good but I need the Lord very first and very most. I need more faith in him so I can confidently say the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. Hebrews 13, 6. My walls are continually before him. 
Psalm 118.8 says, It's better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. And Isaiah 41.10 says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So may he get all the glory for the way he brings babies into the world and not anything I did or did not do. Amen. Isaiah 49, 15 through 16. I will not forget you. Behold, I've inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. I wanted to share something that encouraged me from this memory verse. I was wondering this week, why does God inscribe us in the palms of his hands? Is it for his sake or is it for our sake? In other words, is God's memory so bad that he has to inscribe the names on his palms so that he doesn't forget us? I don't think so. God's memory is very, very good. So he must have done it for our sakes. And I thought perhaps God inscribed our names on his hands so that if I ever were to doubt his love, he could simply hold out his palm and say, when I have engraved your name on the palm of my hand. And it was an encouragement to see that God takes a lot of extra steps to give us strong encouragement, to let us know that he loves us. Because God simply could have said, I love you. And that should be good enough because God does not lie. But he takes the extra step of inscribing our names on his hand. And that's what encouraged me so much um, this week about the Lord. You notice in this verse, it doesn't say that God wrote our names on his hands, because if you were to write it, you would use ink. But in this case, it says inscribe or engrave. That's like taking a hammer and a chisel and just chipping away. It's something that hurts, but at the same time, it's something that's permanent. And that's what encouraged me about this as well. God could have simply written my name on his palm, and that's been really good. But no, instead he engraved it into his hand, so that I believe that for all of eternity, my name will be in the palm of the Lord. And so that's what encouraged me this week, to see that our Father is someone who very much does not want us to ever doubt his love, and therefore he does all these extra steps to encourage us, and that's what encouraged me this week. Thank you.